Okay, for today's video, decided to be a little nostalgic. As you can see by the date, January 26, 1990, this is the day I brought home my 1969 Pontiac Le Mans Sport Convertible. Bought it from Pasad in Pasadena, California. A place called, I believe it was called Wiggy Motor Cars. Yeah, that was it. Wiggy Motor Cars. It was a rust bucket from New York City. You can see by the uh, rust around the wheel wells in the rear quarter panels. The front fenders had already been replaced on that car. Front fenders had already been replaced. Uh, passenger side quarter panel was worse because it was banged up as well as rusted out. The one really good thing about the car was it had brand new chrome bumpers front and back. But the best thing about it was, was it actually had a very, very rare Ram Air 3, 350 Pontiac engine with, um, I believe there were 48 heads. That's the casting number between the, uh, in the middle of the head, uh, right there above the uh, exhaust pipes, center exhaust pipes says 48. Uh, it was rated at actually 330 horsepower, which is actually really good for a 69 Pontiac 350 engine. So anyway, I decided that I would do a GTO clone. And this video will show you how the car eventually uh, came out. And that was my 1972 Nova. I bought that car for 300 bucks. Well, actually, my uncle bought it for 300 bucks. He then gave it to me. And I gave him a 650 Honda motorcycle in, in trade. And that uh, Nova, it didn't look like that, of course. It, it was gold. It had the original gold paint on it. I painted it right there in this particular driveway. The 69 Le Mans came with the exact same Keystone Classic wheels on it. And BF Goodrich TA radials. But uh, they were kind of worn out and the chrome was not very good. So I wound up swapping the tires and wheels off of my Nova here. And I stuck them on the 69 Pontiac Le Mans convertible. Anyway, so I sold this Nova. I put it up for sale for $5,500. Remember, my uncle paid $300 bucks for it. But I did paint it. I did put... Um, upholstery in it. The upholstery was bad. I went to the junkyard and I found a set of uh, front and rear seats. I put those on. I put a chrome dress-up kit on it. I put new new dual exhaust on it. And I listed it for $5,500. Uh, God, I remember this is back in 1990. So uh, today that car would be worth uh, upwards of um, 30000 so I put it for 5500 bucks, and some guy calls me up and says, I've got a 1983 Pontiac Trans Am, and I'm interested in swapping you. So, and, so the guy shows up. I look at his car. Thought, yeah, that's because it was it was perfect in, condi in perfect condition. So I, But I told him, I said, you know what? Give me $1,700 and your Trans Am. And the guy says, ah, it'll take weeks to come up with that kind of money. So I told him, well, go see what you can come up with. So the guy leaves, and as soon as he left, I thought, ah, man, I should have just swapped him. His car was a, a 305 uh, five-speed, um, either a Borg Warner or a Muncie transmission. And it was like really, really clean car. Except for it had a silver paint 
and the silver paint was a little bit faded. So anyway, I um, went inside the house, and then the guy calls me up like 30 minutes later. And he tells me, well, actually, you know what? I told him, I said, you know what? I'll take 2000 in your car. That's what I told him. He calls me up about 30 minutes later and then tells me that he's got 17. So I told him, come on back. So he came back and gave me $1,700 cash and, and his uh, 82 Trans Am. Of course, his Trans Am today would be were pretty much worthless. And that Nova would be worth, uh, like I said, about 30 grand. And then that yellow bug, that yellow bug right there, uh, my uncle, that was my uncle's bug. I wound up swapping him a 78 Saab for it. And that thing was really clean, had new paint, new upholstery, new engine. And uh, so I swapped him for the uh, Saab. And then I put it for 2200 bucks. Can you believe that? That bug would be worth about nine, ten grand today. Put over twenty two hundred bucks. Had a real nice stereo in it. Some guy comes over, looks at it, tells me, "I'll give you two. I think my uncle had like three hundred and fifty bucks in the stereo alone, so I told him, "I said, okay, fine, I'll I'll take the two, but I'm taking the stereo out of it." And the guy goes, "Oh no, I'll, I'll give you the I'll give you the twenty two. <clears throat> I said, "Yeah, okay, that's what I thought." So he went ahead and gave me the twenty two hundred bucks, and I remembered to use that as a Bargaining technique when somebody tries to talk you down. Always threaten to take something off of the car. So I swapped out the trunk lid on the car because on the inside it was rusty. And I bought the 69 Pontiac Le Mans two-door sedan in front of it for the dashboard alone. The dashboard was perfect. I paid $250 for that car right there. $250. Bucks. I drove it home. I also swapped the doors on it. I guess the bottom of the doors were rusted. I don't even really remember. It's been so long ago. <clears throat> but um, I wanted the quarter panels for, for patching. I already bought the uh, GTO hood, the GTO front bumper. Shortly after this, I, I, I bought the 69 GTO Valance. The only thing that sucked about the hood was it had the uh, hin hood hinge pins in it. So I had to fill in the holes. And at this time I didn't have a, um, a welder. And there's the engine on the Nova with $30 chrome dress up kit. Got to mute it there because um don't want to get any violations. But you can see the seats. The seats came out of a junkyard and they were perfect. I also put the Grant GT steering wheel on it. I like to put those on all my vehicles. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know. Okay, now here's the Trans Am I swapped for the Chevy Nova along with the 1700 bucks. What? So anyway, um, I actually painted this car right there where it sat in the driveway. Didn't have a paint booth at the time. The only thing that I didn't like about the car is it didn't have the HO hood or the T-tops. 
that the car was super straight, original factory paint. And the wife is chewing me out for not taking her somewhere, so I put that on mute. On that blue bug, that's an interesting story there, too. I, I had a uh, 1972 BMW Bulvaria, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Yeah, 1972 BMW Bulvaria, like a friend of mine, he had just painted it, put upholstery in it, came over to my house one day, and he saw that I had a new TV, 25-inch TV, and a component stereo system. He liked my component stereo system and my television set so he told me that he would swap me straight across for his bmw so i swapped him straight across for the bmw and he told me the only thing wrong with the bmw was it had a, an issue with the transmission he wasn't sure what it was so he was going to california and i told him well i was i was in el paso at the time so i told him i'll, I'll, I'll go down there with you because i wanted to sell it in la so i got down to uh to blythe california and then the, the transmission went out on the BMW, so I had to push it to a gas station. And I, and I went into the gas station and told me what, what had happened. And, and I didn't have the correct plate on the car because I didn't have a good plate because I hadn't registered it. But I needed something to dra drive it on without you know, getting a permit at the time. So I left it at the gas station. The guy said, yeah, it's cool. I told him I'll be back for it. Later that day, I showed up and my car was gone. I said, hey, where's my car? And he goes, oh, the sheriff ran, a pl ran the plate. Saw that it was the wrong tag, so he impounded it. So had to pay like I forget what it was, eighty bucks or so to get it out of impound. But anyway, I just got the car, and um, getting back to that, there's my uncle, and there's the Trans Am all primered up. I always like the Knight Rider body style Trans Ams. Not as much as the previous gen, though. My very first car was a 1979 Pontiac Trans Am. Drove that car to high school. So anyway, the Trans Am I had just gotten in, I drove it to the grocery store. And I hadn't had time to put the keys on the key ring yet. And... I shut the door and I, I just assumed that the door key would open the rear, uh, well, open the car. I was wrong, so I had to break in through the uh, um, through the center there and crawl through the back of the car to get in. So it was like 30 bucks to re repair it. I had to go and buy a new little center uh, between the taillights. An interesting note is that house right there. My mother bought it for $29,000. And we unfortunately sold it in 2006 for $175,000. And in 2008, it went up to $600,000 in value. And today it's, it's at about uh, $750,000. My two little cousins. She looks just like Carol Ann from Poltergeist. That one there. And there she is all painted up. I... Bought some 79 Trans Am 
sail panel uh, decals and put them onto the uh, sail panel. And replace the uh, little between the uh, tail lights, a little section there. And that's the nice thing about buying a car with original paint. You know, there's no Bondo on it, no body work's been done to it. It always comes out really nice, really smooth. You don't, it, it's, it's just minimal work. Basically, you can just scuff and paint and, you know, take care of a few door dings if it has any. Oh, another thing, that house is, is uh, only around, um, I think it's 800 square feet. And that's my uncle's big black 1975 Chevy pickup. It's actually a two-wheel drive, but... Um, Looks like a four wheel drive. A lot of people would go, would say, nice four by four. The uncle's dead now. He just died last year. Right after I painted the car, I, I barely bumped it in the front and I cracked the paint. But yeah, you don't need an expensive paint booth to paint a car. But you can see how nice the interior was. And being a stick, that made it, this car even nicer. So I, as soon as this car was done, which is done there, like within a day or two, I got rid of it. I saw an ad for a 1975 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray and I called the guy up because I saw the ad for oh, probably about a month or two. And I asked him, I said, hey, I noticed you haven't uh, sold your car yet. Have you ever thought about trading it? And the guy goes, well, no, I, I haven't thought about trading it. He wanted 5500 for the Stingray. So um, I told him, well, I've, I've got a really nice 83 Trans Am. And the guy goes, well, let me look at it. So my uncle and I drove out, drove out there and um, the guy walks out. He was at work and his buddies come out and they say, they say, oh, no, don't, don't trade. Don't do it. Don't do the trade. And I'm thinking, shut the hell up. Let the guy make up his own mind. So anyway, the guy goes, you know, he, he, he took the, this car around the block and this car, it needed nothing. This car was like brand new other than the little scuff on the front of the bumper. So anyway, the guy goes, well, you know, uh, my wife, she doesn't drive stick. And I thought, oh, well, that's the deal right there. Not going to do it. So we got back to his work and he goes, but, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go ahead and trade. So I thought, kick out, kick, uh, you know, I said, oh, okay, I'll take it. I'll, I'll swap you. So I swapped the guy. See the license plate? Van Halen 1. So I swapped the guy, took the Corvette home. It was black. It, the Corvette needed everything. It needed upholstery. It needed paint, which um, actually, no, I take it back. The upholstery was fine. It had these tacky leopard skin seat covers. That's what it was. But it definitely needed paint. The paint was bad. It was black. And no, I didn't paint under the hood. That would have been too much of uh, too much labor. So didn't paint under the hood. But you can see how clean the car was. Super clean. Nice thing about it being a California car, of course it had no rust on it. It was only seven years old. And there's the Corvette I swapped for. The paint was terrible. 
don't know where the guy got it painted, but uh, it was really bad. And you can see the uh, leopard skin, or not leopard, look at the tiger skin. So anyway, if, um, if you're keeping up, it all started from a $300 Nova. Oh, and it even gets better than that because the, 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 um, like I said, I started from a TV set and stereo. I swapped the TV set and stereo for the BMW. I then swapped the BMW for the blue Super Beetle that you see. And I, I, I also, um, he also gave me the uh, 650 Honda motorcycle that I didn't give to my uncle to pay for the Nova. And then swap, I, I, I sold and swapped the Nova for 1700 and the Trans Am. Then I swapped the Trans Am after I painted it for the Corvette. And then I sold the Corvette for 5650 after I painted it. And um, I painted the Corvette uh, also red too. The leopard skin, I mean, um, tiger skin seat covers, I gave them to my uncle's girlfriend and she put them in the car behind, behind the Corvette. I hate those luggage racks. So when I painted it, I removed it, filled the holes in. So that uh, Volkswagen that is part of the trade I got for the BMW Bavaria, the blue one. And then the, that blue bug, that's I swapped that to my buddy. He gave me his um, his Saab, and then I swapped the Saab for the yellow bug, that bug right there. And I believe it was a '65. And then I felt bad about it because uh, it was shortly after I swapped my uncle for the Saab that the um, water pump had seized up on it. And when the water pump seized up, it broke the distributor because the distributor and cam ran off the water pump. Crazy, crazy design. But um, yeah, when that happened, uh, that was the end of that car. These are some of my favorite Corvettes ever. I like to call them the Rodney Dangerfield of Corvettes because they get no respect. And that's a shame because they are very cool cars.
Yeah, the seats weren't that great after all. Now whenever I go to sell a car, I always put may take part trade for question mark. Because not everybody's got all the cash, but a lot of times people have something really, really cool to trade you. And you never know what they're, you're going to get. Noisy smog pump. And here it is, um, taking the paint off. All I did, all I used was a uh, razor blade scraping, uh, um, you know, screwdriver type handle. And just ran the razor blade right down the uh, sides and top of the car and all the paint just peeled off just like shaving. It was pretty amazing. It took almost no effort whatsoever. Back on the GTO um, clone. Sorry, these aren't in order. I've got like four or five videotapes I have to go through. VHS. Process of swapping out the doors. We'll get back to that Corvette very soon. A few more minutes. Bear with me. This is kind of going to be a long video today. You can see just how bad that quarter panel was. 
I'd already actually pounded out most of the dent. <clears throat> but yeah, it's pretty rusted. And you notice that the um, 69 Le Mans had the uh, Pontiac insignia There's the Corvette all painted. And there's my 1966 Chevrolet Impala. And there is my 1967 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. And if you look at the license plate, it says Oldie 67. Well, I guess I didn't get a good picture of it. But um, this car, I actually bought the car for $1,200. And I fixed it. It was wrecked in the front. Right front fender, front bumper, grill. I had to replace all that and repaint the the, the bumper. But uh, that particular car can be seen in the movie with uh, Woody Harrelson called White Men Can't Jump. Yep, that was my car. I sold it uh, for 5500 bucks to... The um, actual um, uh, production, whatever the guy was, but uh, he told me he was going to put it in a movie called White Man Can't Jump with, uh, I believe it was Denzel Washington and the guy who played Blade. What's his name? Was that Denzel? And there's my 57 Chevy conversion. I still have that to this day. And there's the uh, GTO clone. It's all painted. This 66 Impala here, I bought it for $500. And the only reason I bought it is because it had 53,000 original factory miles on it. And the interior was a 10. It was perfect interior. But the car itself looked like it had been in a smash-up derby. There wasn't a, a, an uncrashed-into panel on the whole car. I had to repair both quarter panels. Replace the trunk lid, replace the hood, replace the grill, replace the front bumper, replace both fenders. And the, the GTO clone here was not um, clean at this, at this moment, but in just a second, you'll see it clean. I only wish I had recorded it with the engine running. I put an Urson high flow, I mean a TQ30 camshaft in it. Had Flowmaster mufflers uh, dumping down at the uh, rear axle just in front of it. See, things sounded like a World War II fighter plane. Nice choppy cam. Thing, things sounded awesome. Now, if you remember, the uh, the car actually had a bench seat in the beginning of the video. I swapped it, swapped that out for the uh, buckets. I do have the uh, correct 69 Pontiac GTO taillights and the uh, correct uh, 1969 GTO side marker lights.
I, I couldn't sell that uh, 66 Impala. I put it for 20. I put the 66 Impala for $2,200. And this is after fixing it, painting it, two tone, red with the white top. I couldn't give that car away. Nobody wanted it. $2,200. And it was a true SS. Had the uh, 327 Chevy with the camel, camel hump heads. Ran perfect. Needed nothing. Couldn't give that car away back then. I wound up swapping it for a 1975 Caprice Classic convertible. Which you'll see right here shortly. You see now I got the, the GTO clone all cleaned up. And that car I sold for 7500 bucks back in 1991. Today, even as a clone in this shape, the car would be worth over $30,000. Maybe more, thirty-five, dollars maybe. That car would almost cause accidents wherever it would go. People would be looking at it giving me thumbs up, not looking where they were going. I had one guy almost go off a freeway overpass. And that was back then, 1991. Got the correct 69 Pontiac Le Mans, uh, GTO lower uh, valence panel. Car was 100% correct. The only way you could tell it wasn't a GTO is if you looked at the uh, at the uh, um, the VIN number and, and was able to look it up and look up the engine code. But it did have a, a Ram Air 3 350 in it. And this one I did paint also in the driveway. I missed that car. I almost cried when I sold it. I sold it to some girl. I sold the 75 Corvette and then the GTO a week later. I didn't care about the Corvette. I had the Corvette for almost two years and I, I put maybe 200 miles on it. But that car I drove all over the place. Loved that car. And there's a Saab I was telling you about. By this time, I, had, I think I'd already sold the uh, the uh, 65 Yellow Bug. Otherwise, I probably would have just given it to him. The two reds are, are different. The uh, Corvette has Porsche Guards red, where the GTO has, uh, it's, I believe it's called, um, well, I know it's called Rosso Red, R-O-S-O. And uh, it's a really cool Ford color red, actually. And right there is the gold 75 Caprice Classic, I wound up swapping the um, 66 Impala for. And if you guys ever make uh, nostalgic uh, home videos, make sure you actually uh, let your car run so you can 
hear what it sounds like and remember what it sounds like. I missed that sound on that car. Thing sounded awesome. Yeah, I painted uh, the rims on the, the rally wheels to match the body on that. I didn't care about the tires because I took it right down and I got new tires put on it. So I didn't care about masking them. The Rosso red on the on the GTO is much nicer red. This red had a little too much orange in it. The Porsche Guards red. But that is really the nicest red I've ever seen. And there's the Caprice Classic convertible. I swapped for that 66 Impala. That one I painted black, as you'll see in a second here. Now, this is a 75, but it has a, I believe, 1976 header panel, so it's got the square headlights, which I like better. 1975 convertible was the last year for GM until I believe 1986. This is not the Nova that you saw earlier. That's just another Nova, but that one I got for 300 bucks also. Same thing. It's a 350 turbo 350 trans. Yeah, if you're going to do the do a clone right, do it right. Or don't do it at all. There's the uh Caprice Classic Convertible, primered up, ready for paint. I drove that car over to my brother before I did anything to it. And I told him, I, see, I said, see this car? I said, you're going to buy this car. And he took it for a drive and goes, ah, I wouldn't buy that piece of junk. The transmission was slipping on it and the seats uh, had foam coming up through them. It looked really, really bad. And of course, the gold paint didn't help, but you can see the uh, interior, just how bad it is. It's missing the, uh, the trunk lock. The convertible top was, was shredded. Oh, and it was Wesley Snipes from White Men Can't Jump and Woody Harrelson. I'd already sold the car to him to put in that movie at this time. The movie was released in 1992. And here's the car all painted and upholstered. The upholstery I got at the junkyard, but I really scored big time on that because that particular set of uh, seats front and back looked like they had just come out of the upholstery shop. They looked brand new. And I used a uh, vinyl spray and I painted the door cover, the door panels uh, to match the dashboard. I painted that black. 
I even painted the carpet. The seats were already black, so I had to do something to make it match. So I took it back over to my brother's house shortly after this. And he goes, he, he was like almost in a panic state. Started, he pulled out um, 2,000 bucks, gave it to me and told me, here, take my 78 Monte Carlo and sell it. And whatever you don't get, I'll, I'll make up the difference up to the 5,500, which is what I wanted for, the, for this car at the time. Of course, that's a $35,000, $40,000 car now. So anyway, um, I took his his uh, Monte Carlo, which I had actually painted also, and I because he wrecked it, and I fixed it and painted it. So it had new paint on it. I, I forget what I sold it for. I think I sold it for like $1,800. And he never paid me. The balance up to the 55. So I only got $3,800 for this car. And then um, he finally paid me about five years ago. Uh, the extra $1,700. Wasn't a very good cameraman. But you can see the upholstery, how nice it is. It had a little stain on the seat. Like whoever had it spilled coffee or something. Painted this car in the driveway. Only this time the cops showed up. LAPD showed up. Said, uh... Hey, we're 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 not sure. Uh, well, we're pretty sure that there's a law against you painting a car in the driveway. We don't know what it is, but uh, we can look it up if you want. He said, "No, sir, that's okay." So they left, and then I figured one of the neighbors snitched me off, so pushed it around to about right there in that spot that it's at there, and finished painting it. I had already put the hardener in the paint. I wasn't going to throw away the paint. Paint hardener only has a pot life of about four hours. Actually, I painted it right where that, uh, right where my Corvette is, on, on right on the other side of my '57. Okay, now we're at my brother's house. He wanted me to paint his 
1975, I believe it was a 75, Chevrolet Blazer. My brother was a, a, well, he still is to this day, a general contractor. And this is his Blazer. It's the last year with the whole convertible top. And then he wanted me to do it for free because he's my brother. And I told him, hey, would you build me a house for free? And he goes, no. And I said, why not? You're my brother. So he did pay me on this. And I painted it right where it sits. Change the color of the dash to black also. And this is the same Rosso red that I put on the uh, GTO. Anyway guys, this video is getting awfully long, so I'm gonna put an end to it here. But if you like the video, if you want to see more stuff like this, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And um, subscribe. Leave a comment also. That would be great. Let me know what you guys think. My brother still has his truck to this day. Only he repaint, repainted it black. I actually like red better. Thirty-four years married to the same woman. She was nineteen. I was twenty-one. Now my little boy he's already well thirty two years old. Time flies, guys. Anyway, again, thanks for watching.